Hello everyone, happy Thursday to you. I thought I would end with Revelation 7 going into the weekend and I will get right into it. So starting in Revelation 7 verse 1, I'm going to read a section of scripture, stop and then just do some commentary. <clears throat> so after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had, who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. So there's four angels. They are uh, representing, uh, they, they are holding back nature from the wrath of God. So God often uses nature in his wrath, okay? It's spoken of actually also in Revelation 1, Revelation 14, 18, and Revelation 16, fire, as wind, fire, and water in those various verses. And so then we see another angel who's coming up from the east, and he's speaking to those four angels who are going to release these devastating, um, you know, natural things from God. Uh, God is in control. He's giving them the instructions from God, and he's saying, wait. Don't do anything yet until we put the seal of God on these specific people. The seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Okay, and so um, I will continue on with that part and then comment some more. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. And from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000, and from the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. And okay, so basically we can clearly see that these 144,000 are from the tribes of Israel. And so today, um, when people accept Jesus Christ, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And so this is God's guarantee that we're saved and we're safe from his wrath, and he will one day take us to heaven. So the 144,000 Jews will receive the Father's name as their seal. And you can see Revelation 14, 1 in that also. In contrasting the mark of the beast, uh, which the people who refuse to accept Jesus Christ in the tribulation they will willingly accept the mark of the beast, okay? And he will give that to anyone that follow him. And those references are found all throughout Revelation. For example, Revelation 13, 17, 14, 11, 16, 2, and 19, 20. So basically, these seals are saving these specific um, people, these 144,000, from what is about to happen. And he's protecting them so they can spread the good news of Jesus Christ, okay? They're going to give the other people in during the tribulation the chance to have, you know, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior by faith in him, okay? They're going to be preaching the gospel, so they're going to be protected of what these forces of nature are going to be coming upon, okay? Okay. So going on, it's now talking about a new set of people, okay? So it says, after, in starting in verse 9, After this, after that just happened, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, 
people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. So notice they're standing. They're people from every tribe, nation, people, and language, okay? And they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell down on their faces before the throne, worship God, and say, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. So stopping right there. So we have this one group who is standing, a great multitude that no one could number, um, coming from every tribe, nation, people, and language, standing before the throne, the one on the throne and Jesus Christ. And they are crying out to God, worshiping him. They're in a white robe with a palm leaf. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And then separately, then after that, the angels, the elders, um, and the four living creatures, and they give their exclamation of praise saying, amen, and their own exclamation of praise. And then it goes on to say, then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? So this elder, one of these elders is asking John this. And he says, I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. Okay, so this is a forward look into the great tribulation, okay? Okay. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. So remember, they have the white robes with the palm leaves. Remember back when uh, Jesus was walking the earth and they put down the palm leaves and say, Hosanna, okay? So their robes are white because they've been washed in the blood of the lamb. They have accepted Jesus Christ. These are people during the tribulation who have come and accepted Jesus Christ from the 144,000 witnessing to them, okay? Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And that's the end of Revelation 7. And I'll just give a brief commentary. Okay. So basically um, the lamb, as we know, Jesus Christ has died for all people of every tribe, nation, tongue, um, you know, and, you know, from every corner of the earth, he has died for salvation for people. Not everyone will accept his free gift of salvation. We know that there's going to be people who reject him now, who have already rejected him and passed on, and people in the tribulation who will reject him and take the mark of the beast, okay? So these people have accepted Jesus Christ. And these people are going to face martyrdom because they are going to be not be able to buy or sell or trade because they refuse the mark of the beast. So they're going to be without life's even bare necessities, that they are going to be suffering hunger, thirst, and a lack of shelter, okay? You know, and so that is going to be a terrible way to live. But the fact of the matter is that they will be rewarded. They are going to be going on in glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And, you know, when we see them standing here, they're standing before the throne. They're accepted by Jesus Christ, even though originally they did not believe, you know, prior to the rapture. They've come to faith in Jesus Christ. They are accepted just like us who has accepted Jesus Christ. They are true overcomers, okay? And also they are joyful. Notice they're giving the praise to God for saving them, okay? 
and also they're rewarded. They're going to serve the Lord in joyousness in, and in whatever the Lord has them doing. We'll all have work when we go to heaven. It's not going to be sitting around doing nothing. We are going to be, the Bible talks about this, about us having joyful service to the Lord. We don't know exactly what that is, but it will be rewarding. We will love it. We, you know, we may look at our jobs now and go, oh, I hate that. It's going to be nothing like that. It's going to be joyful service to our Lord and Savior who has redeemed us by his blood. So during this picture, we've seen the Jewish, the 144,000, and we've seen this great multitude of people who've been saved. And then, sadly, there are going to be those who reject Christ and take the mark of the beast. But even right now, we haven't even got to the tribulation because the rapture will occur before it, okay? And there are people rejecting Christ right now. So they're going to be rejected and in going into the second lake of fire at the very end. And what a terrible thing, just like these in the tribulation that have taken the mark of the beast. Everyone takes, you know, has that like, oh, wow, they took the mark of the beast. But people now are making that decision also to be identified with the kingdom of darkness. We need to be like these 144,000. The lesson for us is preach the gospel. Share your faith. Share your testimony with others so that they can be saved and they do not have to experience this. And also, remember that God draws people to himself. So pray that God would draw people to himself, that he would replace their heart of stone with a heart of flesh, uh, that he would give them a circumcised heart, uh, that they would come, their eyes would be open, their ears would be open, their mind, their spirit to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Because no one can come to the Father without that regeneration of God speaking and drawing people to themselves, okay, to himself. And so you can see that throughout scripture. It speaks very plainly of that throughout scripture and especially in the New Testament. So pray that people that you know who are not saved come to the Lord Jesus Christ so they can experience this blessed scene that we just got done reading about. I hope that everyone has a wonderful day. God bless.